Hey, hi there Facebook. Hopefully I'm coming out live. I'm just going to give it a minute or so. Let's have a look. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I'm coming out live. I'm going to have my iPad running in the background. Just so I can make sure. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. All right. People are joining. Excellent. Okie dokie. Hey, you. All right. So uh, I'm going to attempt to do a live session. Oh, just swap this. Oh, hang on. One second. I'm going to attempt to do a live session with the puppy. Um, uh, obviously, the puppy's been here just over a week now. So um, this could all go really, really sour. Who knows? Um, so he's been getting on great. He's had a little bit of an upset tummy um, yesterday. So he's on um, chicken, which he's absolutely ravenous about. Um, so I've got some of that in a tub, which I'll do my little session with. So um, at the moment, He's got really great play, um, and he's got really, really great food drive. Um, but he loves his food, and because he's had a, uh, a little bit of an upset tummy, obviously he's really, really hungry. So I won't combine the two things tonight. I might do that further on the week. So um, the session is just going to be shaping. He's not done any of this before, so it could go really, really sour. I'm going to talk through um, what I've been doing afterwards. Obviously, I don't want to keep him in suspense, because he's obviously clearly rearing to go. Um, and, um, and then you can ask questions if you want, all right? And I'm going to tell you some stuff that's forthcoming in the next week or so. Um, I've got a couple more lives with the puppy and whoop, with some of my other dogs um, this week, um, letting you know about some really exciting obedience stuff coming up, all right? So um, I'm going to jump straight, straight in and train the puppy just because he's getting agitated. Um, so the other thing that I will, I've i got for him is I've got a Kong um, with some really nice treats in it. I've got this crate set up, obviously, um, which normally wouldn't be in here, it'd be in my bedroom, but I've just moved it so afterwards I can pop him in there whilst I'm asking any questions for you guys, and he can have his Kong. Um, so, you know, he may, um, you know, he, he's also obviously not toilet trained, he's had a real struggle with, I've had to be really, really vigilant with his toilet training. Um, so I've got wipes, you know, who knows what will happen, it's puppies, that's what they do, and dogs are unpredictable at this age, certainly. Um, so just to um, let you guys know, um, I'm going to try and talk as I'm training uh, to explain what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to do a little shaping session with the puppy, as I explained, and I'm going to shape him hopefully to get on a, a, a blue fit course bit. It's really, really simple. Um, I like to do this with my puppies when they're young because it starts them, uh, it teaches them the concept of offering behaviour and also um, shaping a specific um, sk uh, skill that I can use later on, which is getting on something. Um, but more importantly, it teaches them the communication that I'm going to use later on. So um, for me, my dogs are, I, obviously I click train them, and I have taught them a marker word. Uh, or I have, they, my dogs have several marker words. So I have a word that says to them, um, there's food, you're going to get food. I have a word that says I'm going to get toy. He doesn't really know either of them. He knows the food one-ish. Um, I've obviously been using that to train him a little bit. Um, and I've done very, I've done little bits with him. Um, you know, as you would with a puppy, but really it's about setting him into a routine. So he's getting there, he's sleeping not well through the night, he's in a crate next to my room, uh, next to my bed. Um, he's pretty good with um, uh, only getting up for a wee and then going straight back to sleep. Um, the la night before last, he was he, he was he got me up a couple of times because, he, as I say, he had an absolute stomach. Um, and that often can just be adjustment environment, changes for puppies, etc, etc. Um, nothing that I'm overly concerned about. He's really well in himself, just something I would monitor. Um, the patches on the floor are not actually where his weed, it's where um, he had a water bowl. I picked the water bowl up in preparation to train, and there was some water on the floor, which is now <laughs> trudged around the floor. Um, obviously, when I train my puppies, the environment is really, really key. So this is, um, flooring is um, matting, which has good traction. That's really, really important um, for puppies, obviously, and for any dog if you're moving them around. The great thing about um, oh boy, um, dog training, certainly for obedience, is you don't need a lot of space. So a lot of my foundation training for my obedience skills are trained in this room. Oh boy. Um, all right, we'll start in a second. Um, I was taught in this room in a relatively small space. So it's one of the great things about training the dog for obedience. And uh, Obedience is most definitely my first love. I've done a lot of different dog sports. 
but I'm really, really passionate about obedience, and um, you know, I, I love the intricacies, uh, intricacies of it. I love the fact that there's conflict between, you know, getting the dog to work with lots of enthusiasm, but yet be really, really um, tight on criteria and very technically correct. And I like the challenges for as a trainer that brings me being able to to merge the two things. Obedience often gets a really bad rap for being boring and serious, but actually, for me, nothing could be further from the truth. It is just a series of tricks, as you can see, and essentially everything that I would train the puppy to do um, are just tricks which then merge into obedient skills. So if you're thinking about having a go at obedience, there's some stuff that I'm definitely going to be covering this week that's going to really help you. Um, I'm going to run through his repertoire of um, behaviours that I've done thus far. Really, 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 really simple. He hasn't done a lot. Um, and obviously I'm not going to play, use introduce play, because I don't want to get into conflict with him being distracted by the food and then trying to get him to, to play, um, I can do that in another session. And generally speaking, at this age, I would keep the sessions quite separate at first, just until I had the puppy really into a toy and really, really motivated by a toy, um, and had skills around toys. So they'll bring the toy back to me, um, they will let go of the toy when I want them to on cue, or, um, and they'll um, tug with it really, really nicely. Until I've got those really, really solid, I tend not to exchange the two things, which I'd, or swap between food and toys. Um, ultimately, I want my dog to take food and toys, so I work really hard at the dog having value of both of these individually, okay? So, um, with this puppy in particular, um, he's got both, um, but definitely um, his food drive is more at the moment because of the last couple of days. Um, I haven't made a point of trying to switch in a session. Uh, no, I don't think I have, uh, and that's been a... a um, uh, because of I, I don't feel that I have enough skills around toy play. Um, once I've got some skills around his toy play, then I'll start to merge the two things. The words I use to describe toy play is the dog must be committed and they should be interactive. All right. So if you want to ask questions, by all means, at the end of the at, at end of me training the puppy, by all means, uh, and I'm going to explain some more details about what I'm doing. But I'm going to get started with him. So normally I would start my older dogs with a switch on cue, uh, and, and I've um, discussed that I think in previous lives about teaching a really solid switch on cue um, but I'm going to use the equipment um, at this stage to teach him to have the switch on and the setup so I'm going to get my treats ready so the dog knows and those will be triggers that I can then put a cue on to say we're going to start training for me um, um, teaching a really good switch on cue is a massive part of um, sports training and specifically for obedience so often at the higher level we or any level to be fair You'll take your dog to ringside and you may have to wait a period of time while dogs before you work and you need your dog to be patiently waiting, focused and, and engaged but not, you know, um, inattentive or looking at the other dogs, etc. You want them to be just hanging out with you and be able to then switch them on and go straight into the competitive ring. Um, once the dog's switched on, I want the dog to understand to have total focus on me. So again, with the puppy... Um, I have been working on his attention, so that's a really, really massive part of any sports training. Certainly for an obedience dog, we want our dogs to be very, very attentive. And I do lots of reinforcement for him focusing on me and actively um, looking for my the front of my body. Not necessarily my face, but orientating to the front. Um, and I also teach them to, to stay attentive by my side um, as a separate entity, but I want the dog to be... Um, engaged and to also be intent with um, their attention, pushing me to, re to do something exciting. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that as well. Um, so when I first start shaping, it's really about establishing a really strong line of communication with my dogs. So as I explained earlier, the difference between food and toys um, and the dog understanding which marker word um, means food and which marker word means toys and the specifics of a click. So for me, I probably shape a little bit differently to a lot of people in that I only click the dog for the end behavior. So my click word says to my dogs, whatever you're doing at that moment was absolutely why I'm training. So that doesn't mean I don't reinforce approximations or the dog offering attempts. I absolutely do. Or the dog trying to figure something out or the dog choosing to re-engage re in the game. Absolutely. But I wouldn't necessarily always click those behaviors. Um, and, I, and I'll show you that with the puppy and hopefully it'll make more sense when you see it in practice. Okay. Um, so, um, at his stage, all I'm really doing is engagement, focus and attention, and some shaping skills, and some beginnings of some obedience. So I'll just show you his repertoire 
and see how we get on, right? So, let's get you sorted. So, the first thing I'm going to do is just let him know how I've got little, his treats in here. Pop him down the ground. Oh, oh, oh. And he knows I have some food. I'm going to put some delivery on the side here and keep some with me. So, I'm beginning to introduce, good boy, the concept of remote reinforcement, big boy. So, I can reward him from me. Good. And I can click him and go to the side and feed him. That's really, really important for a sports dog that they understand that reinforcement can be off your person. <laughs> Good boy. Yep. He's offering me a SIT. Okay. Good. He says that's the one we've got today. And then a bum sheet. Yep. Good. And we're just starting up backing up. So we're going to see if he offers that again. Okay. Good boy. I missed that one. Good boy. Good. Hang on. Nice, good. So he just learned that today, okay? And I just free shaped it. <laughs> yep. Good boy, I'm gonna let him have that one. Wait, it's there, 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 there. Good boy. Hey, good. Good again. Okay, he'll work out that there's no. Push those back a bit. Make sure I can't get to them. Good boy, yay! That was good. So he chose to come off the treat. So the treats are also a distraction. Good. I'm going to remove my person again. Good boy, super. Good. Yep, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to move on. He gave me the behaviour I want. You can see that he was getting a little bit frustrated, okay, because I wasn't. Um, clicking him straight away. That's not a problem. He's going to learn to work through that and, um, and push through and not um, get distracted. So I'm going to move, jump straight into my um, shaping center. So I've got this big blue object. Good boy. Okay, and I'm going to just pick the puppy up whilst I talk to you guys. Good boy. That was really good. Oh, okay. So he knows I've got food in my hands. I'm going to actually put it in my pocket. So the idea is that he all he has to do is get on this up, this blue fit pause cushion. Really, really simple. I'm going to position it really close to me so that he has minimal um, option to make an error. Okay, so he could wander off if he wanted to, but it's highly unlikely. So I'm setting him up to be successful. And the idea is that he stands on it. Okay, um, then I'm going to build that up, hopefully where he's actively seeking it out. But we'll see how he goes. And I'm going to talk through what I'm doing. I'm going to do it side on so you can see. Okay, so I'm going to just put it there. Position myself there, and I'm going to pop the puppy to the side. So we've got to make some effort to go on the item. So he's going to probably go over to the previous treats, which is fine. He can't get to them. Make sure he can't get to them. Right. Good boy, super. So he came back to the engage in the game. Good boy. He stepped on it. I feed on the item. Okay. So you notice I'm not clicking at this stage. Okay. So he's going to try and get to me. Edge a bit closer. So I'm going to not, yay, good, he looked at it, okay, glance in that direction, yay, good, feed on the item, good. so again, he looked in that direction, good, looked in the direction of the item, I'm not looking for a massive headway at this stage, I just want to see if he makes the connect, yes, good, boy, he stepped towards it, okay. wander around and offer different behaviours than he has previously. I'm going to wait him out Good boy, and see if he figures out that coming back in the game. Good boy, nice. So he looked at it, even though it's not... A comp Yay, super. Another little effort there. He looked at it again. So I'm not click. Good boy, yeah, yeah. Good. So I click that because he's four feet on it, and that's the behaviour I want. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is release him off, so okay, and lure him away and feed him for responding to that. I'm going to see if he makes that connection again. Good, so wait. Yay, good, yep, good. So fed him on the item. Good boy, feed him. Now he offered me an SIT. I'm not bothered if he, what position at this stage. I can progress to that stage. Good boy, I can progress to asking him to uh, be in a specific position. So I'm feeding him multiple times. So I'm really reinforcing him quite heavily. Four, oh, crumbs everywhere. 
going on the item, okay, and pairing that with my click. You heard me say that noise, I'll probably do it again, which for him is YIP, which means foods on it this way, okay? So let's lure him off. Okay, I say the word first to lure him, and I wake him out, okay? And I see if he sets back on it. Yep, good. So now he's gone on it. You could argue that he's doing it more fluking it rather than making a decision to get on it, okay? Um, okay. I'm not going to feed him for that now. I'm going to see if he goes back on the item. So he's gone. I want a little bit more. I'm moving it on. Let's see if he makes that connection. Good boy. Yep. Yep. Good. So nice. Now he's gone on the item. I'm only going to click when he gets on there. So I've reinforced him for those approximations. Okay for the attempts, for the offering, anything that was even remotely like him considering getting on that item. Okay, go away. He didn't come off on that one. So I'm going to reinforce the release word. See if he goes back on. Yep. Nice. Good. Good. And go away. Okay. There. See if he goes back on. Yep. Nice. Good. Go away. Get it. Nice. So he's really making, you can see that little thinking going on, where he's trying to work out what gets him to, to gets me to mark him. Okay, get it? Good boy. Okay. He goes back on. Yep. Very good. Okay. So now I'm going to just see, get it? If he just makes a little bit of a good point. Yep. Good. Super. Feed him on the item. Good. Okay. Okay. On it now, so a little bit of distance now, only fractional, but I'm going to see if he makes that. Yep, super good. Good, he makes that connection. Getting on this item earns him reinforcement or gets him a click. Okay, this is not the best. Okay, chicken isn't the best to train with. Okay, just because. Yep, oh, that was a dodgy one. Good, that happens sometimes. You click a little bit prematurely. Good boy. Okay. Watch how specifically I'm feeding him. Okay, I'm feeding him very, very specifically over the item. So think about your placement and reinforcement. Yep. Okay, he got off. I'm, that's fine. I'm just going to put him back on and feed him. Good boy. Get it. Do one more. And then I'm going to end with this little bit and move on. Let's see if he works out. Good boy. I'm going to see if he goes a lot. Good boy. So I want him to really hold that on there for a little bit. So again, good. Just, that's fine, he can make a decision to go off. Okay, so just raising my criteria a little bit. I know it's hard, isn't it? Good. Yay. Yep. <laughs> good boy. Good. There we go. Don't need any rubbish one. Let's do one more. Come here. Good boy. Bring out treats. Okay. Yep. That was a better one. Super. All right. Good. Feed him in position. So for his first session, I'm related with that. He's never done that before. All I want him to do is figure out how to go on the, on the item. I use the, okay, good boy. I use the, um, the dimply side up so it gives the dog a bit of traction. For me, I just want to keep so they've got grip. So I'm going to just wait for him to, good boy. Good, nice, hold that. So I'm going to do some of his other behaviors. You saw him offering um, sits and, and um, stands. So I'm also going to do a little food follow. Yep, which is a foundation skill for heel work. I'm going to do it standing up, okay? So, you, how you start this exercise off is you have the food in your thumb and your finger. And all I'm doing is having the dog nibble the food and eat the, um, nibble the food and eat the treat, okay? Okay, so what tends to happen with puppies is they don't necessarily always um, understand to eat from your hand. You may have to do some work. He initially wasn't hand orientated. Yep, good. And all I'm doing is a couple of steps where he's just having his head up and trotting along. Good boy. Do you want to do this side? I like to work my dog from the right and the left. Okay. Good. Yep, good. Nice. Good boy. Good. Do side. Good boy. Yep, good. And I like to turn them clockwise and anti-clockwise to bring them in. Yep, just so they don't develop any bias. Okay. So I'm going to turn this way. Yep, good. He actually does a little pivot on my hand. I can do that with him as well. Yep, good, nice. Where he's just rotating his back end round, which again is a little trick, but also, yep, a precursor to a turn. So I can then evolve that into a little turn. Good boy, good, good. So let's do a follow. Yep, good. Him with his little head up. 
Only for literally what? Through two or three steps? Okay. Good boy. So let's do a little pivot again. And I'm going to do a little turn. So I'm going to start facing with you guys. Okay. And just having pivot. Yep. Good. So again, the foundation of a turn for obedience. This one. Good. Yep. Good. Good. Oh, how do you look, sweetie? I just have my hand facing back. Good boy. Good. See? Yep. Good. Nice. So all I'm asking him to do is rotate round into position. So how that works is, and um, my good friend Denise Fancy does a similar variation called pocket hands. Mine's similar, yeah, where I just have the treat in front of the dog with my palm facing up, and I just turn my knuckles so they're forward. Yep. And as the dog does start to move behind, I reward. So the other foundation exercise I can do is start to teach him to come into position. Okay, so if I bring my hand in, yep, he'll find his little heel work position. Good. And at this stage, it's a, a stand I want, which is great. Good boy. Good. So he's just learning to be next to my leg. Let's do another one. Okay. And even do a little side step and a turn. So there. Good. Good. Yep. Good. Good. Yep. Good. Nice boy. Super. Yep. So just getting him to move around um, into position. Look at all these crumbs, eh? Look at all these crumbs. Okay. So we're going to do some position changes. And we've only done, as I say, a little bit on this. Okay, so let's see what he does. So I have learned the, yep, good, the D-O-W-M. Okay, good boy, good. Let's do one more. He works out. Yep, good. Okay, and I'm just doing it with my hands on the ground as he goes, okay, towards, good. Good. Good, let's go again. No, no, it's hard. Good, I click him as he drops to the ground, okay? Now, the most, I talked in the um, intro or in the video on Instagram about the most important cue you can teach your dog, and that is most definitely your puppy's name. So you haven't heard me say his name, although I'm sure you guys probably know what it is by now, um, but for me, the dogs responding to their name is the most important cue that we can teach them, good boy. So I teach that initially by saying the words, so, uh, and then just, quickly grabbing his collar and feeding him, okay? So I would have done some conditioning with his collar as well, so you can see he's really comfortable with that. Good boy, okay? Once I've got the dog happily grabbed, I can grab his collar and I can feed him, so grab the collar first. Grab the collar, feed him, so I do collar grabs. Then I'm gonna add his name to it, okay? Swipe, yay, good boy, good. Okay, good boy, okay? I can oh, get some more, get some more, good boy. Swipe. Yay, good, okay? So he, once I've got the puppy responding, then I can deliberately throw a treat off, get it, and make sure I feed permission, swipe, yay! He comes back to me, I grab his collar, and I feed him, okay? So I'm gonna just run through that again. Get it, ooh, it's there. Swipe, yay! He comes in, I grab his collar, and I feed him. Good boy, super boy, okay? The other thing I can do, is just randomly say his name. I can fix it on camera. Good. Yep. I'm going to click him for being attentive. Yep. Good. Okay. Good. I wander around. Yep. Good. Yep. He hasn't got any distractions in this environment, so great place. Good. Yep. Good. To teach your puppy the beginnings of a focus and engagement. Get it. Try. Yay. Good. Yep. Good. Nice one. I always like to make contact with my dogs when I initially call them. Good boy. Get it, swipe, yep, good, nice, good, bad, super, good boy, okay, the belly's getting full, okay, good boy, let's do go back to another position change, yep, nice, good, get it, oh, you're going to wait, ha ha, wrong so, it happens, good boy, my pup, oh my horses, that's fun, that's going to be a good toy, okay, pop that up there, What's that? Good boy. And that is, I have to say, one of his things that he does. He doesn't give a lot of indication that he's going to go to the toilet, which makes it somewhat challenging to get him house trained. But we're working on that one, okay? And I'm just being really, really hyper vigilant. Obviously, when I'm teaching and while I'm training and doing the live, it's difficult to interrupt and pop the puppy out, all right? But these things happen, okay? Long term, we'll get over it. That's what puppies do. Okay, let's do one more. Um, let's do some hand touches. Okay, ready? Oops. Yep. Oh, that was a good 
Waiting him out for contact. I'm not sure because he's black. I don't know if you can see. I'll do it a bit closer. Yep. Good. Now delivering by the hand. Okay, let's do this hand. Pretending so, creating interest. Yep. Good. And as soon as he goes towards it, he doesn't have to be strong at this stage. I just want the dog to understand. Okay. To go towards the handle. Oh. <laughs> Then my mechanics weren't great, so I'm going to do that one again. Yep. Good. You can see him beginning to make that understanding, to touch the hand to get the reinforcement. So at this stage, I'm rewarding primarily by the hand. Yep. Good. As you can see there, in delivering I don't have an issue at this stage to reward by the hand or in the hand. I very quickly move that on to part of rewarding by the hand, but not necessarily it from it. Good, so I deliver the treat here. So I'm creating a little reinforcement zone so the dog wants to drive to the hand. Certainly for heel work and obedience, we want our dogs to, uh, one of the foundation elements is the hand touch, but I want my dog to remain straight to the hand. One of the fundamental mistakes people do is, okay, yep, is reward away from the hand. So what that trains is the dog to slightly curve and look at the hand, um, or the opposite hand, or where the reinforcement's coming from. How that progresses into heel work training is the dog develops a flex out to where they're trying to preempt the reward coming from the opposite side, okay? So I like to reinforce by the hand and eventually I reward actually behind my body so the dog learns to remain straight. Good boy. I'm not, let's do one more thing. Good boy, okay? And then we'll give you your comp. Okay, let's see if we can do, oops. Yep, good. So you start a little twist to the left and twist to the right. Yep, good. Super, let's do it standing up. Good, so bigger circle on that side. Puppies will always have a, um, most dogs will have a, a preference which side they turn to, okay? Yep, good, you can see he's more fluid on that side, okay? So I do this side, you see how he struggles a bit more? That's okay, it happens, all dogs have a preference. Yep, good, so I just help him a little bit more on that side, okay? Yep, good, yeah? So as you can hear at this stage, I've not put any verbal cues. Okay, all done, good boy. So, before I start talking to you guys, I'm going to get his con, and I'm going to just give it to the puppy, and then I'm going to come back and talk to Camp Okay, good boy. All done. That did. Good boy. Good. Let's get him a con. Good boy. Come on. Yeah. Good boy. I have pre-made a Kong, um, which I stuck in the freezer, or in the fridge, um, which I'm going to pop in his crate. He doesn't, I'm not going to shut the crate door on him, because okay, I'm not going to use one with these stays in there or not. But, okay, so he hasn't done any crate games or anything like that. I'm just going to pop him in there, good. Okay, we'll shut that up there, I won't knock it. So that will occupy him while I'm hopefully answering questions. And again, he hasn't had um, um, masses of sessions on crate games and offering um, going into the crate, etc. So for the purpose of just doing a live, I'm just going to give him his Kong. He can eat that again. So if you're training, it's really important that you, you plan these things. So, you know, I may want to go and train one of my other dogs. If I was doing that, say, at the park or uh, 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 um, wherever I normally train, I would have a Kong so that he's learning to be in the background, hearing my other dogs being trained and interacted with and not get um, wound up, which he very much could be. Um, so, any, oh, we've got it? All right, so I'm going to ask see if there's any questions on what I did with the puppy. Oh, you don't want it. You can come out with me if you want to. Let's have a look. I'll shut that up. Yeah. Look, there's more in there. Good boy. Okay. 
okay. Yeah, I'm uh, okay. Um, oh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, he's an absolute sweetheart. I'm really, really pleased with him. He's a really, really bright little thing. Um, certainly has. Um, he looks tiny compared to his brother mine. So, what food are you using, Barbara? So, um, Barbara, I'm using. Um, oh, the screen. Okay, I'm using chicken with him at the moment because he had an upset tummy. Um, it was better today than the day before, so I'm just a bit cautious about his food. Um, I don't think there's anything particularly, I think it's just a case of changing the environment and um, all the stresses of moving to a new house, which can often do that with puppies. So um, I'm not overly concerned, but obviously just being a little bit, um, just watching make sure you don't the toilet, a little bit cautious about making sure I don't put it too much into his system. So come here. Okay, let's go. When do you put cues in? Simon asked, when do you put cues in? I don't put cues in until I'm really, really happy with the behaviour, when I can reliably predict the behaviour is going to happen. So his little spin, I'll probably put a cue on that relatively soon. Um, I would, um, the other behaviours, more specific behaviours, I'd wait until they're um, really, really polished. So for position changes, sit, stand and down, okay? I want them done in a very specific way for an obedience dog. Um, and I would wait until the dog reliably did the manoeuvre, good boy, and um, they could do the position exactly how I wanted to, uh, to until I put a cue on it. Often you find I'm not, I don't, I used to do where I would say the dog would do the action, sit, good sit, sit, good sit. But what I found to be more effective is to teach the behaviour first, get it how I want it, and then put a label on it. That way the dog hasn't had any history of rehearsing or um, yeah, doing the behaviour incorrectly and then me having to fix it, all right? I did that actually with, a, um, with, uh, with Super, who is now seven. I did an experiment where I put cues on from the second I taught them and to see, it just as a learning curve for myself, what effect it would have. And I, have, I definitely did a lot of um, fixing um, poor behaviours or the way he did it and having to improve it. He's a very forgiving dog and a very, very, very clever dog. It, wasn't a big deal with him, but I could see with a dog that wasn't quite so this, um, so smart, it could become a problem. All right, so definitely my preference is to wait until um, the behaviours are more or less how I want them, and then I put a key on them. Yes, on the floor. Oh, look at my odd socks. Come here. There we go. Good. Let's get that. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, Tony. Oh, good. I'm glad to see that. I'm absolutely elated with him. I have to say. He's a super, super little puppy, um, really, really bright, really, really smart. Um, things that I, um, so just quick on puppies specifically. So I'm quite cautious and careful about what I do with my puppies. So he meets my dogs every day, um, but he does for um, brief periods of time. He might be five minutes here, 10 minutes there, um, engaging with them and interacting with them. He, he's meeting other dogs and being socialized, obviously, the safe dogs that I know. Um, so I want him to have lots of positive experiences. Again, for if, if he has a future in sport, which hopefully he will, hopefully I'll do obedience with him. He's going to be in an environment with, you know, several hundred dogs. He needs to be comfortable and confident with all things. So it's really important that I take that into consideration. Even if he wasn't a sports dog, if he was just, a, you know, a, a, a pet dog, and he's obviously my dog for pet dogs, but if he wasn't going to do a sport as well, it would still be important to me that I raise a dog that's confident around other dogs. So um, for me, I am really, really pedantic and I view socialisation as a, you know, a whole series of lessons in themselves. I'm fortunate I, I have lots of dogs, so he can meet dogs in a very controlled, constructive way. If you don't have access to quite so many dogs, just take your time and you're better off to get one dog you know, once or twice a week than to immerse your dog in 15 dogs and have an untoward experience. So be really cautious about that, all right? Um, let's have a look. Would you say that that was a long session for him? Um, that was probably, Simon, that was probably about an average session. I would say you've got sessions and how long they would be would be dictated by the puppy. As you can see, he's really, really bright and he has a good level of energy. So I can do quite a bit with him. Um, so in contrast, say Hottie, my Border Collie puppy, everything would be done less in some sessions it was in 30 seconds um, with her. Um, when I was building certain entities within her training, so play was something that I would do very briefly, very quickly. Um, again, she had a tooth issue, so that was definitely part of that. Um, her brother Reset could train a lot longer. Um, 
great who would, is very soft, so I would do short, sharp sessions to make sure that I really kept her buoyant and upbeat. Um, if you did went on too long, she'd start to worry, and then, uh, so not now, but when she was younger. So the dog will dictate the pace of the session. Good boy. Um, so I always go with the dog. Now, obviously, somebody that trains a lot of breeds of dogs, um, you learn to go with what the dog gives you. So, um, obviously, he's my first giant schnauzer. Um, and so I don't know, you know, if he's typical of the breed and un un unusual, I don't know. All I know is that I, he's a puppy that has a lot of focus, a lot of energy, um, and wants to be doing things. So I can maximise on that. I like to do quite a bit with my puppies, and then when they reach about mm, four months, um, they go through, obviously, a, a secondary fear period, in which case I then back off them, and I do um, more on socialising and domestics and working on their recall, etc. So, obviously, as you can see, I'm working on his name response. I'll invest massively into his recall, um, preempting for the future when inevitably it's going to disappear, because that's what always happens. Um, and a recall, as Susan Garrett says, is a reflection of your relationship with your dog, so I work massively on my, my, my recall because I want my dogs to have that real head flick response, okay? Good boy, let's have a look. What else questions have we got? Okay. Um, how much play time do you allow him with your other dogs? I don't let him play with my other dogs um, from a safety point of view. Um, he would, Jungle would love to play with him, my man and ma. Um, but she's way too boisterous and way too strong. Um, and I don't want any, of you, any, it would be a safety concern. But for any dog that I have, my primary concern is getting that relationship with me first and foremost. He does meet the other dogs, so he's been obviously with Sugar, he's been with Ray, he's been with all of the dogs. Um, you know, he's met Cecil, um, and he's, had, he's been in the kitchen with them, not a problem at all, like certainly the oldies, and, and um, he, with all the dogs he's been with them, and um, you know, even feeding time, he's fed with them at certain times, because I like my dogs all to eat together. So all the stuff that I do domestically with my dogs, he's been integrated with, but very supervised. I don't let him play with them um, unless I'm around um, and in a position to, well, I don't let him play with them full stop, to be honest. Um, my relationship with him needs to be established first, um, and until I've got that, then I can then let him get into my other dogs. Um, my other dogs are really like very neutral about dogs, which is great. Um, they will play with each other, but they prefer to engage with me, which is what I want from my dogs. Um, and they're very confident around other dogs. So um, because they live with so many and they are socialised very specifically, um, it all works out in the end. Um, in my opinion, I think that until you've got your relationship established with your dog, um, you you can't equate to another dog. You know, if I let him play with the jungle, for example, they would be hooning around the garden. He'd probably be having a whale of the time, and I can't measure up to to that. So until I've got him really focused on me, I'm not going to let that um, happen. Um, and then slowly over time, I can let them have more and more freedom, and and and, and also when he's bigger. Um, what a, the fatal mistake people make, certainly with uh, with with any type of dog, is. Um, all puppies come with predisposed what I call switches, okay? So, you know, a, a border collie is going to come with a, tr with a switch for chase or herding. Uh, a Malinois is going to be coming with a chase, a, a switch for, good oh boy, um, for biting things. Uh, 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 similar for him, he's got very, uh, he loves to chase things. Now, my goal at his age is to pair that, that desire with me until that switch flicks. Uh, and it intensifies, which it will at a certain developmental age, um, and not allow it to be rehearsed in any way that isn't conducive to our relationship. A fatal mistake that people make is they um, allow that switch to be flicked on inappropriate responses. So, for example, with your Border Collie puppy, um, car chasing is a great example, or um, Hoover chasing is another example, or um, chasing the other dogs is another example. Um, when that happens, when that flick, that switch is flicked, and it's in, against, um, it's towards something that's um, away from you or you can't control. That's when you can often um, have real focus problems and relationship issues longer term. Um, so I'm really pedantic about my dogs not rehearsing um, or, or being allowed to have the the switch flicked onto anything that isn't um, productive for our relationship and the life that I want them to have and for them to be, you know, 
well-balanced family pets first and foremost. So, for example, he wouldn't be allowed to, you know, chase me on her scooter. Um, that wouldn't be something that I'd allow him to rehearse. Um, you know, because it's not something that I ever want him to do, to learn to chase somebody on a moving item. Um, now, obviously, he's going to be, hopefully, do, eventually might do some bike work and do IGP. He's going to have to learn to chase somebody in motion. But until he ha I have control and focus on me, I'm not going to allow that to be rehearsed on anything that's inappropriate. All right? Okay. Hopefully that's giving you some insight. Okay. Any other questions? Let's have a look. So, um, over the course of this week, I'm going to be doing a couple of li more lives. On Wednesday, I think at the moment, I'm going to do my next live. Um, and I'm going to do that with um, one of my older dogs, with Great, showing you some foundation obedience behaviours that you can do in the confines of your own home. I don't know about you guys, certainly in the UK, we are in for some really tough weather, and it makes dog training out and about really, really challenging. I tried to train in the park um, the day before, and it was like a, a, a mud bath. So it's going to become more challenging. The great thing about obedience, okay, competitive obedience, is that you can do it in, the, in your own home. So I can do, I can train all the exercises for a competition sport with obedience dog in my living room. Um, Good boy. Um, in my living room, I can teach all the really, really advanced exercises in, the, uh, in my living room. Obedience gets a really bad rep in that it's perceived, as I say, as the, the serious sport, but actually it's a series of tricks, as I mentioned earlier. I'm going to show you some tricks that evolve into obedience exercises further on in the week, and you get to meet some of my um, VIP group members. I think you want to go out soon. Oh, oh, yellow. Um, you're going to meet some of my VIP group members later in the week, uh, and get a little insight into my online training and what's on that um, in preparation for a launch, an exciting uh, launch and a giveaway next week. All right, so keep up your eyes open for that. But um, from hopefully, from if there's any other questions, just make sure there's no other questions. Okay. Cool. I don't think there's any more questions. Hopefully you, uh, this has been helpful, just showing you some of the typical things I do with the puppy. The big thing about puppy training is they shouldn't know, know that they're being taught anything specific. Yeah, It should all just be a game. You can see, you know, somebody noted his tail never stops wagging. He's having a great time. He's just um, focused on me. We're building that relationship. He's seeing me as hopefully somebody that he wants to engage with, that I'm fun. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give him great things, i.e. food and toys, etc. And we do these little funny tricks like getting on the objects and we, you know, eventually we'll pick up things and we'll touch things with our nose and so forth and so forth. Hopefully all those will become obedience exercises as we go down his, uh, his life and his journey uh, and we'll see where it goes. But um, yeah, for me and the puppy, um, I won't say his name because I don't want to desensitise it. Um, yeah, have a good evening. Hopefully that's been helpful. Sure. Good. All right, all. Have a good evening. I'll see you on Wednesday.